Hello and welcome to Negative Feedback. Today we are shooting some black and white 35mm films and giving a bit of a comparison to see which one you should be buying. We are in the lovely Apple Studios. Um, and we've got a great space to take some pictures of some guys in here uh, to give some good, cool pictures of the films. So we've got a lot of different black and white films to be shooting today. Uh, we've got some Triax and HB5, which are two of the, the biggest films. Triax was always big with the journalists back in the day, and HB5 kind of becoming the most popular now. We've also got some cheap alternatives, such as Retro Pan and Foma Pan, which we have in some varying speeds. Both of these are way cheaper than Triax, and who knows if they're as good. So the first roll I'm going to be shooting is Ilford HP5, uh, which is a 400 speed black and white film. It's actually my favourite uh, film to use for black and white. It's just a great standard, kind of not too contrasty, not too dull. It's nice. So we finished shooting the HP5 and the Triax now. Uh, we're going to move on to shooting some of the cheaper films. Uh, I'm trying Foma Pan 200 first. I uh, thought we'd go over a lower ISO film uh, just whilst we have all the light. Um, so give it a go and see what it's like. So now we're going to be shooting some Retro Pan 320, which is slightly weird. I don't think I've ever seen a 320 speed film. It also says soft on it, uh, which doesn't fill me with hope of what it might be, but let's give it a go. So we're now on to some FOMA 400. of some information uh, after the time we had the lovely studio to take the pictures I have spent a fair bit of time in my bathroom in my makeshift darkroom developing all the photos I used ID11 at 1 plus 1 dilution first time I've ever used it usually use Ilfosol but this worked excellently um, the FOMA 200 definitely was meant to be shot at 200 I did that by accident and it didn't really hold up as well in the shadows I also scanned all of the images at home on an Epson V600, which isn't the best at scanning 35mm film. It does the job, but it's really not as sharp as as sharp or high resolution as you can get somewhere else. So to kind of counteract this, to give you a better idea of how the images would look if you took them to a pro lab, I went down to Photofusion in Brixton in London and I borrowed their Imicon virtual drum scanner and I did a few high res scans 
uh, off each roll so on our lovely website you can now go and have a look and see what it would look like in its full glory or what it would look like if you're like me and you develop your film at home. So going into this, um, HP5 was definitely my favourite film and I think it's certainly retained that um, title. It's just got a great range of tones, barely any grain and you can push it to 1600 without a problem and that's even though I didn't show that here, that is a great benefit to me. I like being able to shoot things with a very high aperture and having the ability to shoot at 1600 and not see too much grain is a great bonus for me. Next up, the Triax. I have always hated before. It's always been too contrasty. And I think sometimes it looks like it's been over sharpened or something, like especially in this denim jacket, it looks a bit strange. But these are actually my favourite pictures I've taken on Triax, and some of these are actually really nice, I think. Um, I do think the image that I will show now on the Imacon looks way, way better than the home scanning. I'm not sure the V600 does Triax any justice at all. And to be honest, I don't think I would buy it again. Um, I just can't see the point when it's slightly more expensive than HP5 and it's just n not as as much what I'm looking for. HP5 is more like a blank canvas where you can add the contrast back in and it's kind of harder to take it away from the Triax. The FOMA 200, which I accidentally messed up, isn't great. Um, it's not really a fair judge, I guess. Like it, ha it, I guess it did its job well for how much it got thrown in its stride. Um, I don't dislike the photos, but they're not great. FOMA 400, on the other hand, I do actually really like. Um, it's a much cheaper alternative, and it holds up great. Some of the images do have a bit more grain, and it does look like the shadows didn't quite hold up quite so well, but I think it's actually really nice, and I'd definitely shoot it again. I think the Retropan 320 was definitely a surprise of how nice it came out. It is extremely grainy, um, strangely so considering that this was a lower speed film than the rest that I shot, but I guess it's kind of the character of the film. It's not too distracting, and what is behind the grain is actually quite nice, especially the images scanned when they're done properly on a, a nice scanner. The grain kind of just disappears, um, and then it's really nice. I, like a great alternative. So I think in all HP5 is definitely what I would go to. I'd be interested to see which one you prefer and um, please let me know. Um, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Hackney Studios for letting us to come by and extend my gratitude to Photofusion for letting me come and use their scanner and also Parallax who let me try out some of their black and white film. Thank you for watching the video. Um, good, good job watching through all of the rambling. Um, hopefully see you next week. Hope you enjoyed it.